Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial series on the IO port for the TI-83 Plus family of graphing calculators. So this is if you have a TI-84 Plus, a TI-83 Plus, one of those graphing calculators, there's an IO port on it and you can code that port to actually hook up two calculators together and make like multiplayer video games and stuff like that. Um, you can even like if you're doing more on the engineering side you can actually make your calculator communicate with other physical devices this is what this IO port is for you can write code and have the calculator communicate with other devices typically other calculators so, um, so you can make things like multiplayer video games and stuff so why am I making this tutorial series mainly because there's typically like when you try to look up this yourself there's not much resources Kind of, there's kind of a barrier of entry because there's a lot of software you tend to need to figure out how to do this but I'm going to do this tutorial series without using any you don't need any assembly knowledge for this tutorial series no assembly at all you don't need to download anything everything we're going to do on the calculator itself so this tutorial is just the introduction and the things we're going to cover um, in the entire series is what is the I.O. port, what is the TRS cable, writing to the I.O. port, reading from the I.O. port, transferring an integer between two calculators, and then I'm going to have a final video explaining the hex codes I use. Um, you don't need to know what the hex codes actually mean. They're really short. You just got to type them in on the calculator to get started. Um, but I'll actually do a short video explaining what they mean if you're curious at all. But you don't need to know it at all. So you need at least one of these calculators, a TI-83+, plus, TI-84+, plus, TI-84+, plus Silver Edition, or TI-84+, plus Color Silver Edition. Now the TI-84+, plus Color Edition won't work. The TI-84+, plus CE, that won't work because it does not have an I.O. port. They removed it, which kind of sucks, but they did. Um, then the TI-83, the original, I believe it has an I.O. port, but... You have to code it differently, and I don't own one, so I'm not exactly sure how that would work. So I'm not including that calculator in this tutorial series. You also need a link cable. Um, so if you don't have a link cable, uh, this is what mine looks like. You can find them on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. They're called 2.5 millimeter TRS mail, the 2.5 millimeter TRS mail um, cables. You can just look up on Amazon and get you one. They're pretty cheap. So, you also need rudimentary TI basic knowledge. We're not using any hex. I mean, we're not, I mean, we are using some hex codes. We're not using any assembly. You need no assembly knowledge at all. But you need some TI basic knowledge. And I have some tutorials I'll, I'll put a link to in the description of TI basic. They're kind of old. Um, but it does have an introduction. I might do some more in the future or maybe even redo that series. But you need some rudimentary TI basic knowledge. There's plenty of resources for TI basic. It's a pretty simple language. Optional, you're going to want a second calculator. You don't need one. You can play around with a lot of this code on a single calculator. But if you actually want to like make programs that communicate between two calculators, you're going to want a second calculator to actually test it. So what is the I.O. port? The I.O. port is the port located at the top of your calculator labeled I.O. This I.O. stands for Input Output. The port is used to communicate between other devices by both writing output and reading input. It is designed for 2.5 millimeter TRS cables. So here's the top view of my TI-84+. Plus. As you can see, there's a little port here labeled I slash O. What is a TRS cable? The link cable is a TRS cable. The TRS cable, TRS and TRS cable, that it's an acronym for tip ring sleeve. This refers to the three main parts of the TRS connector. So this is the a zoom up of my actual cable, but up here at the tip, here's the um, connector. So as you can see, we got the tip, some insulation, the ring, some insulation, and then the sleeve. So these three parts are made of electrically conductive metal separated by insulation. So the kind of goldish part, that's the metal, and then the black part is the insulation. So the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. Um, 2.5 millimeter, I keep saying that. 2.5 millimeter is just the diameter of the TRS connector. So this is kind of, the connector itself is 
roughly a cylinder shape. So that cylinder has a diameter of 2.5 millimeters. If you look at a standard pair of headphones, like if you're listening, if you're using a pair right now, you can just take them out the headphone jack, and you'll notice it is also has a tip ring in the sleeve because standard headphones use 3.5 millimeter TRS connectors. So the only difference is there are the diameters a millimeter um, larger. The tip and the ring can either be pulled high or pulled low. If one of them is pulled high, then 3.3 volts is going through it. If it is pulled low, then 0 volts is going through it. The sleeve functions as the ground. It cannot be pulled high. It is used to complete the circuit. So the tip can be pulled high. You can send a voltage to this or not send volts to it. You can send a voltage to this or not send a voltage to it. Or And this, the sleeve right here, is the ground. So here I have one end of the link cable, so you can see I have my link cable right here, is connected to the I.O. port of the calculator. So you can't, I couldn't get the calculator in frame, but basically on the other end of this link cable it's plugged into the calculator. Both the tip and the ring are high, pulled high by default. So the moment you plug the cable into the calculator, you got voltage going to both the tip and the ring automatically. Um, in this image, I have a multimeter with one probe touching the tip and one touching the sleeve, and the voltage is reading 3.21 volts. So as you can see, the black probe is touching the sleeve, the red probe is touching the tip, and it's reading 3.21, which is roughly 3.3. Um, the volt th This voltage is enough to light an LED. So here we have an LED lit by connecting the positive end to the tip and the negative end to the sleeve. So as you can see I got the positive end connected to the tip and the negative end to the sleeve and the tip is carrying 3.3 volts and the sleeve is the ground. So as you can see it actually creates a complete circuit. Here's the ground, here's the tip, and the voltage comes through here, goes to the ground, and it lights the LED. Since the ring is also pulled high, we can light the a separate LED by placing the positive end on the ring and the negative end on the sleeve. So as you can see, rather than this end being on the tip, this, now it's on the ring and it's still lit. As long as this end, the short leg of your LED, is touching the ground, it doesn't matter if you touch the tip or the ring, the LED will still light.